Welcome to RCR Insights. I'm Martha DeGrasse, and I'm here today with John Deland of Argus Insights, Wayne Lamb of IHS Technologies, and Jefferson Wang of IBB Consulting. And our topic today is the Amazon Fire Phone. Thank you all for joining us. John, I'd like to start with you. I know that you are tracking reaction to this phone on social media. What are you hearing so far today? What we're seeing mostly is actually the tech community weighing in on it, the investment community. They're, they're not ex as exuberant as you might think for a lot of reasons that uh, we'll go into during this conversation. Consumers so far are interested, they're, they're, but they're, it's, it's interesting to see how Amazon's trying to distinguish themselves in what's already a kind of a saturated market. And yeah. doing it through the experience design, and there's a lot of things that they're getting right to drive consumption that they've learned in the fire. Uh, I think the things that will are peaking consumers' interest based on what we're seeing are the free cloud storage for content and the notion of May Day. Uh, I think that's something that they've learned a lot of lessons with the fire. That's the tablet that's going to carry over with the fire phone. Yeah, I think May Day has gotten a lot of positive positive response and a lot of those Mayday calls are going to go straight to AT&T I think if people have wireless network questions is that is that what y'all are hearing as well definitely I, we one of the biggest impediments to iPhone was uh, launching on the AT&T network um, we found that when the iPhone was available on Verizon uh, the overall consumer response just blossomed because they could finally make phones on their iPhone phone calls on their iPhone oh, right. it'll be interesting to see um, especially in the target markets where Kindle's, Amazon's trying to focus, what the response will be from the network issues. Still the number one complaint we see in, from consumers on smartphones is actually making phone calls. Okay, now Jefferson, I know that you talk to the carriers a lot and I know that you have some ideas about why Amazon may have gone exclusively with AT&T and what you think it might mean for that carrier. Can you tell us what, what you think about the exclusivity? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, it might be coming down to technical issues as well. Yeah. It's a lot more difficult to work and certify a smartphone when you have a voice situation going from LTE down to a CDMA scenario with one XRTT. So some of that complexity adds to testing and adds to uh, launch timing. So when you're going from LTE down to HSPA, it, it's a lot smoother transition based on standards. So that might be one of the reasons as well. Yeah, and, and Wayne, I know that you have some, some thoughts, though, on that. I think you said that the phone is, is can work on several LTE bands, right? Right. In, in, in the specifications on Amazon's uh, website, they've listed nine LTE bands, and yeah. uh, those uh, additional global uh, support does suggest that they have designed the, the phone for European markets in mind. What about other U.S. carriers? Do you think we'll see any of that soon? Uh, well, they have the uh, Band 4 support, so obviously this can go on to uh, a T-Mobile network. Um, however, I, don't, I did not see uh, Band uh, 13, I believe, which is uh, Verizon, so um, that, um, that would uh, negate that possibility. So you, you brought up T-Mobile, and uh, I think we're all aware that, that John Ledger has been very vocal about this phone. He hasn't had anything nice to say about it, and he's got um, a free iPhone trial that he launched last night. Mm -hmm. So uh, everybody's smiling. Uh, Wayne, what's your reaction to all that, and where do you think it's going to all it? Yeah, you know, I, I was surprised. I actually was somewhat anticipating that type of free sponsor music data on, on this Amazon uh, uh, announcement. But, um, but T-Mobile kind of um, uh, took the bull by the horn and, 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 and kind of uh, coincided their uh, on carrier announcements last night. Uh, I think that's a very uh, interesting uh, value play that they made um, uh, right on the um, you know, kind of riding on this 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 uh, uh, coattail of of, uh, of attention towards uh, this segment. Um, uh, and uh, you know, T-Mobile is is trying to do their best, and they're, they're obviously uh, upset that they got left out of this deal, and uh, and they're trying to. Uh, uh, now move forward on their strategy, on carrier strategy, to, to win over our hearts and minds of, of uh, U.S. subscribers. And, and they're using the iPhone to do that. And already a lot of people are comparing this phone to the iPhone. So clearly Amazon wants to create a, a buzz that's similar to that, that it surrounded the iPhone six or seven years ago when it started. But 
from what I'm hearing from you all, from the market, and, and looking at Amazon stock price, it doesn't seem that, that that's too likely at this point in time. John, what would you say about that? My guess is that this is going to be one of those classic Amazon uh, investment strategies in which we first scratch our heads, why did Jeff do this? And then in a couple of years when they have you know uh, a double digit percentage of the market, oh, that makes total sense. Um, when they first launched their tablets, people thought, what are they doing? This is insane, but it was to drive content consumption. I think this just adds to their ecosystem. I think the service play they're building on top of that uh, becomes really interesting from the way people are using their handsets today. Firefly is a weird one because effectively it's driving commerce and search, but if you look at it, it's Amazon search that bypasses Google in, entirely. And so it's part of Amazon capturing their own information about consumer behavior and interest outside of what Google collects on us today. So it, it all, the services that Amazon will build on top of the Fire ecosystem, now that there's the phone part of it as well, can drive better insights for both shopping and commerce. I think we'll, it'll be a couple years before we see those come into fruition, but I think that's their, their Trojan horse in this case. So you're bringing up a couple of points, the phone as a driver of commerce, and you're saying that you wouldn't be surprised to see double-digit market share within a few years. Do you really think that the phone itself is going to is going to take off and and become a real contender in the smartphone market? We're, what we're seeing is that we're seeing a fragmentation in experiences, um, where single handsets from HTC and LG last year, the, uh, the HTC One and the LG G2, started challenging from a from a delight and buzz standpoint, um, Samsung and Apple, but only for niche parts of the marketplace. And so as we see iPhone and um, Galaxy S5 sort of reach the limits of adoption where now they're driving adoption by dropping price. I mean, the drop, prices drop on the 5S faster than any iPhone ever launched. Um, where this creates an opportunity where people are looking for something outside of the Apple ecosystem. And Amazon's creating uh, their own kind of alternative to the Google universe and the, uh, and the Apple universe, which I think will start slowly to grab some people's attention. Um, it will happen. Will we see double digits next week? No. You know, that's you still have to play by the laws of adoption, right? Uh, iPhone didn't happen overnight, um, and if we apply the same hubris that Nokia did with uh, Apple, saying that uh, Amazon won't do very well because their sales numbers would be slow in the beginning, we'll make the same mistakes that uh, Nokia did. So. Okay, so you're talking about the third ecosystem that that gets into apps, and I, I think that maybe there are about a fifth as many Amazon apps as in iOS or, or in Android. Jefferson, what do you think about the app ecosystem? Is that a real disadvantage for Amazon, or will people be able to? I mean, two thousand, two hundred thousand is already a lot. What else? What else do people really need? I think a couple comments for that. The first thing is that the switching cost to move from an Apple or a Google Play ecosystem over to a third ecosystem is quite expensive for a consumer. So when you think about $100 in apps that a user has purchased, maybe $50 in in-app upgrades that they've purchased, and they've completed level 500 in Candy Crush Saga, you don't want to start all that over as a consumer when you move to another ecosystem. I think that's kind of that switching cost is a big barrier right now for a lot of consumers. And I think the second comment is, at this point, when you look at an arms race in terms of numbers of apps, we're, we're going to reach a point of good enough. Certainly at a million for Apple and Google, uh, it's a lot. The arms race is going to be over soon, but the question is which apps are critical. And when you look at the Amazon 200 to 300,000 apps, if Instagram is not there, is that critical for their target market? Is that critical for people to say, I really want to go over there, but I have to have Instagram. What am I going to do? So it's, it's really once you reach that level of, of kind of good enough for apps, then it's which are the key ones that you must have. And as long as Amazon has that, uh, eventually they should be okay. Well, they're probably not going to – I mean, Netflix is a direct competitor, right? So there might be an issue with, with that, right? Yeah, I, I think there will be some that will kind of hold out from this ecosystem, but in the end also, if you think about it, a lot of these content players and over-the-top players are just looking for more distribution anyway. And if mobile phones are one of the key screens that go out there and tablets and televisions are, these content players will say eventually, yeah, great. If this is a proven ecosystem with good hardware and good developers out there, then I'm happy to kind of use this as another distribution channel. So I think you'll be you'll be pleasantly surprised once you see if it becomes a viable ecosystem, uh, more and more developers will adopt to it. And if you notice, 
during that announcement, um, Amazon really talked a lot about here's how long we spent on these feature developments, here's how long they were in development in our labs, and it almost spoke to developers to say, we have a different product here. You can do different experiences if you work with us in our SDK, you know, give us a chance to think about this. Uh, that, that also, I think, played to a, to a lot of developers. So you think they'll get a good response from the developer community? Remains to be seen. I think, like John and both said, right now it's one of those things where Amazon launches an initial product. They want to learn as much as they can from it, and I'm sure that they have kind of alternative business models behind this and adjacencies behind this beyond just content consumption. Uh, so I, I think they've done a good job creating a story. I think they've created a, a pretty good situation for developers. Uh, now it comes down to can they make money off of it. In the end, you know, people go to iOS first because you can make uh, a lot of money off that. Google second. The question is, what's the third one that you can make a lot of money off? Is it going to be a Windows ecosystem, or is it going to be kind of a, an Amazon variant of Android, a fork of Android? Right, but but Amazon perhaps has a little bit of a different business model. They don't necessarily need to make money selling the phone. Uh, Wayne, you've looked at the the manufacturing costs or estimated that for this phone. Do you think that that Amazon's going to make a profit with each phone they sell? Well, currently as it stands, uh, they are. <laughs> if you look at the unsubsidized cost of the um, of the Amazon, uh, Amazon Fire Phone, it's six forty nine, which is, uh, albeit uh, thirty two gigabytes instead of sixteen gigabytes, but essentially the same cost as an unsubsidized iPhone. So, so they've been pricing this at a premium uh, play, which is a little bit shocking given the history of Amazon selling devices at cost to to uh, to drive the back end revenue. Uh, when the user actually uses it and, and purchases with it. So this is something that is a, a bit of a surprise, um, unexpected, but, um, uh, but it, uh, in terms of making money, um, the, the business model of Amazon is, isn't really in, in, in hardware. It's, it's in the core business. So I see this as just setting the, the, the bar high, and there you have lots of room to move down in pricing to, um, to uh, try to uh, in, reinvigorate the, the product. Okay, well, we are, we are about out of time. Does anybody expect to see a, a price change for this phone in the next, you know, six to eight months? Uh, we see a lot of smartphones that come out, and then, you know, a few months later, they're, they're $50 or free, you know? John, what do you think? Are we going to see something like that, or it's too soon to know? Oh, no, it, it's, it's, it's a question of how fast. It's not, it's not <laughs> yeah, it's when. Um, I think that's going to be the, the it's, because they're going to have, to, to Wayne's point, they're going to have pressure to drive adoption, and... As we saw over the holidays and post-holiday, when Verizon and others drove huge promotions around dropping prices and increasing rebates on smartphones across the board, we saw a demand pop. That's how Apple actually beat expectations in Q1, because all the retailers dropped the prices like crazy. And so um, I think we'll, have to, we'll see the same dynamic very quickly. The, the question, we should probably all take bets about how fast. Whether all right, what would you bet, Jefferson? Well, I think one, you know, to, to John's point, I think... If you look at kind of the cost of the device at $199, with a $99 Amazon Prime membership for newer existing customers, it really effectively takes it down to a $100 price point. And, and as we all talked about, there's kind of those three real good price points for subsidized smartphones. There's the free ones, there's the $99 ones, and then there's the $199 premium ones. So if you kind of take away that Amazon Prime membership, it, it's an effectively a, it's a $100 phone. Um, and, I, and I think to, to John's point, it'll be interesting how much and how quick will they drop that uh, once consumers don't want to adopt that or, or may not want to adopt that. Okay, well, we'll, we'll have to reconvene in six months and, and see where it is. Thank you all very much for being here today. This has been RCR Insights. Thank you for joining us. This will conclude the show. Thank you. Thank you.